So what's the best way to practice if you want to learn how to play this? So if you've been on social media, you've probably come across the piano arrangement of the Cornfield Chase from Interstellar. This one is by Dorian Marco. Um, it's available on MuseScore. I'm going to link it in the description below so you can uh, feel free to support the creator of this arrangement. So technically this piece is in three different parts. First is the staccato section which takes up the first two systems. Second, there is the first set of arpeggios. And then lastly, on the second page, there is the third set of arpeggios. This starting staccato section could be played one of three ways. Either you can play your right hand above, or you can play your right hand below. I actually prefer what, in my opinion, is easier, and it's redistributing the hands. I talk about this a lot in my other videos of redistributing fingering. It looks something like this. I just find it so much easier than having to deal with the awkwardness of hand crossing. Um, and I, not only is it easier, but I feel I can get a better, cleaner, uh, more accurate sound without having to worry about messing up. So the way that I choose to do this is um, keeping this consistent, 4-2, four, 4-2, two, four, two, four, two, four, two. So nothing is changing. And then together. From here, we're at the first arpeggio section. These types of arpeggios are very common in Ravel or Debussy. Or... It's a sort of extended arpeggio, and in this one, it's hands switching. So we've got both our pinkies lining up. Here, Dorian Marco indicates to use one, two, three, five. Um, you could do that. I like to keep the four because. Um, in this repeat, we're going to go back to the pinky. So I want to keep the pinky free. I would practice uh, ascending and descending along these arpeggios, trying to make it fluid and like a wave. So notice how I'm not trying to stay too much in one location. I am freely moving my hand uh, with the shape of the phrase. Now, when it comes to this arpeggio, something like you might see in the Chopin, uh, you've got to move your arm quite a bit. A way that you might want to practice this is uh, using this as sort of a pivot point, your forefinger. Um, and this will tell you how far your arm needs to move. So notice my arm is placed here, and then it's here. Um, it's a lot larger of a movement than most people realize. And then from there... From here, you're just gonna have to reach over just a little bit farther to B. So that's a bigger movement you might want to practice going from E to A, E to B. Now, what you don't want to do to avoid injury, you don't want to like 
grab at and push these notes down. All the weight you need is going to come from the arm moving, so try to keep the fingers relaxed, not tense. Now, here we are. Same thing, personally, I prefer one, two, three, four. Very similar. So you can see the rhythm is slightly different here at the very beginning. You have a 16th instead of straight 30 seconds like it was previously. Uh, it's just gonna be a slight little delay. And if you notice, for the vast majority of people, unless you have very large hands, uh, it's really not possible to truly connect this E and this C. But thankfully, there's a little bit of time. So you have that extra 30 second space to get from here. It is gonna require a little bit of a jump. I, I believe this is the only typo that I found. Um, I'm pretty certain this is supposed to be a D. Uh, it would stay consistent with the rest, um, and that C, I believe, is a typo. And then now, we enter this part. Now, instead of playing them arpeggiated, uh, it's a good idea to practice these things even block because that will put you in the hand position that you need to be in, in advance. From there, you just take this position and you roll it. So I'm kind of like pulling off of the edge of the keys and into the air. Practice it hand separately, and really focus on trying to get the clarity of the notes. So you want the fingers active. To practice transitioning uh, to the new section besides playing them block, another thing you can do is uh, hold on where the pinky of the right hand hits. That is going to replace where your thumb of your left hand was. So that's a good point of reference. As you're doing that, um, don't forget that your left hand has to be moving too. So I'm replacing where the thumb was, but I'm also moving into position. Same thing here. So going all the way down, move, move. So anyways, those are just a few tips on how to practice this piece. I will be uploading the second part uh, for the second page of this tutorial in a couple weeks, but if you want to access it sooner along with some PDFs of the fingering suggestions and other helpful tips, that will be available on my Patreon, which I am finally going to release next week, so stay tuned for that. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions or comments. Happy practicing in the meantime, and I will see you guys on the next video.